Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to analyze the features of quad. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper too. So let's begin with the topics of discussion that we are going to look at. First of all we will talk about why in news. Then we will talk about the quad and we will talk about the significance of Indo-Pacific region. We will also talk about China's aggressive expansionist policy. We will also talk about the challenges related to the evolution of Quad, the way forward. And in the last of the segment, I am going to ask you a means-based question. I am going to offer you a means-based question for answer writing practice with the help of this segment. All right. So let's begin with the why in news. So this topic is in news because for the first time ever, India has used the term Quad officially in order to underline its independent approach towards the Indo-Pacific region and also to underline the coordinated approach and of course a free and open Indo-Pacific region which is strategically very important not only for India but also for the United States, Japan and Australia. All right. So this is the third if we talk about this meeting this is the third meeting of the foreign ministers since it officially came into being the concept of quad officially came into being in the year 2017 and this is the first time ever that india has used this term quad remember that very well this is the significance of this particular meeting so not only this meeting is not only of course the basic program if we talk about the basic fact is that yes it is a counterweight to China's expansionist and very aggressively expansionist policy in the Indo-Pacific region. First is that, but it is not only restricted to that. It is also coordinating towards maritime security, counter-terrorism operation, vaccination program and the rest as well. So, if we talk about this, let's first understand what Quad is. So, Quad as a concept was introduced by the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in the year 2007. Alright, but it was just a concept, just a concept in the sense in 2004 when tsunami hit India and many of its neighboring countries. It got in assistance with Japan, US, Australia in order to provide them medical aid and financial help. And since then only, this concept started with, their, with the evolution process. And then in the year 2007, Shinzo Abe did say that yes, we are moving with this concept of quad. However, the term was never officially used. All right. And then after that, it started evolving and it started evolving as a challenge to China. All right. So let's look at this. It is an informal strategic dialogue with four members namely India, Japan, Australia and the US. Its objective is to ensure and sustain an open, free and prosperous Indo-Pacific region. Although it is maintained by semi-regular summits, meetings, information exchanges and military drills of all the members, but in this particular meeting it was stated by the uh, foreign ministers of all the countries that why not make it an annual summit and because of that, it is gaining the strategic popularity, not only in India, but also the US, Australia and Japan. And that is why China is extremely upset with this, the, with this grouping. All right. And the move was paralleled by the joint military exercise Malabar, which was held at an unprecedented scale involving India, Japan, Australia, Singapore and the United States. So if we talk about this exercise, Malabar exercise, this is an exercise with stimulated war games and also many other exercises. It is not just a navy or naval interoperability exercise, but it is conducting drills in the sense in kind of, in, in situations of if ever China poses a threat to India or any of its neighbors, which is strategically very important for any of these countries, they could definitely practice the drills they could be prepared for this entire situation all right so we will discuss about malabar later if we talk about the significance of quad 
First of all, the significance of the grouping is that it is an opportunity for the like-minded country because India, US, Japan and Australia, they have political democracies, market economies and pluralistic societies. So we are like-minded group of nations and that is why our approach towards the entire global economy, the entire global political scenario is the same. And that is why we definitely go for an open, free, stable Indo-Pacific region. Alright, we will discuss Indo-Pacific as well. Alright, so if we talk about Indo-Pacific region, we will discuss about it in detail. But it is extremely important for India because Indian Ocean is at the intersection of international trade. It has got many choke points as well. So India needs a stable, free, open, which has very smooth transit in order not only for India to grow but all the economies to grow and prosper and of course counterbalance to China as China is aggressively expanding not only in South China Sea but also in East China Sea. It can cause a big trouble not only for Indian trade but also the global trade if it wants to, if it gathers or drums up the similar, what do you call it, domination in the Indo-Pacific region. Alright, so if we talk about this exercise, Malabar exercise. Malabar exercise has been in practice since the year 1992 and it has been a bilateral exercise between India and the US. And after a point of time in 2015, it started evolving when Japan joined it. And in the year 2020, Australia also joined it and it extremely upset China. What did China say? China said that Australia, it, Chinese government was so overwhelmed and so angered that the Chinese the state mouthpiece, China Times, it said that now what is Australia doing? Australia is aggressively sending navies to China's doorstep. It had of course seen the shift of power. And what happened after that? The Navy, the Indian Navy distanced itself. The entire Quad process was distanced from, the entire Malabar process, beg your pardon, was distanced from Quad. And it said that we are not conducting this exercise, the Admiral General, he said that we are not conducting this exercise in order to negatively affect any country. We respect the sovereignty, transparency and rules-based order for every country who is sharing their borders in the Indo-Pacific region. Alright, so if we talk about the Indo-Pacific region, this is a concept which says that the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific region is an integrated region and it is not only strategically, geopolitically, strategically important but also economically very important not only for India but all the countries who have borders and trade through this region and this, has, this region has many choke points and that is why it is very important for every country to have this area free of any kind of unilateral domination. Alright, so if we talk about this, so you can see South China Sea and East China Sea are a part of the Indo-Pacific region and China is penetrating deeper and deeper in, these enti in this entire region. And there are so many islands here like the Parasal Island, the Spratly Island, Scarborough Shoal, which are actually claimed by China under the pretext of the Nine Dash Line map. So, Nine Dash Line map says that this entire region, starting from Henan Islands of China, this entire region, it's like a Nine Dash, alright? This entire region belongs to China and many countries have claims over these islands as well. So, this is a disputed region and of course, East China Sea is very important not only for China but other countries as well. So, if we talk about the Pacific region, here is the Pacific region, right? And here is the Indian region. So, that is why you can see for trade it is so important because there are so many choke points. We will discuss about the choke points as well. So, first of all, we are going to of course discuss the strategic significance. If we talk about the strategic significance, half of the world's GDP and population lies here. So, if we talk about the importance, it can't be underestimated and countries such as China, India, Thailand, Vietnam, 
the entire asian region is a very prosperous region it is a developing although it is a developing region but it is extremely prosperous and there are so many markets that are untapped and that is why it is important for economic growth as well economic growth can only be achieved if this region remains stable without any unilateral interference and opening up of all the choke points and of course mineral resources there are so many mineral vital resources such as fish stocks oil oil reserves gas reserves and many other things so that is why we need our mineral resources to be shared in the most balanced way right and also commerce now here we can discuss about the choke points you can see the choke points a choke point in military parlance it means that region which is extremely narrow but in order for any army or any country to achieve its objectives need to go through that region and if that particular region is blocked or choked it will create a problem and those objectives will remain unfulfilled so as you can see this is the malacca strait and this is the malacca choke point which is known as the malacca dilemma as well so these are so there are so many choke points here you can see there is a choke point over here over here and most of the choke points are present in the indo pacific region so that is why it is very important for the commerce to be remaining for the commerce to remain intact this region needs to be free right and china does not want that china wants the economic dominance so quad and malabar exercise malabar exercise can definitely be seen as a part of it although all the countries are not actually agreeing to it but it can be seen all right and maritime trade through that only all right moving on let's talk about see this this image i actually put it to show you that this is a this is an image from japan times and it shows that how china the dragon this is the dragon chinese dragon chinese dragon is trying to penetrate all the regions unilaterally here you have indonesia malaysia brunei philippines taiwan all these countries they do not want one country's domination and china is a dragon over here so this is a very interesting picture from japan times if we talk about china's policy china actually it has justified the domination over the entire region by saying that we have historical ownership of this entire region and that is why the nine dash line map the silk route in order to justify its unilateral domination over the entire area it says that we have the right to manufacture islands we have the right to put those islands as dominions in order to obstruct any country to infiltrate in that region and of course ch challenge china's unilateral domination first is that second it also says that united nations conventions laws on the sea uh, laws of the sea do not have any say because it is an internal matter and un clause does not have any say or its judgment will not be credited as very valid according to china in the east china sea it has also increasingly increased its presence in the indian ocean region through submarines and also how can india tackle chinese influence now india needs to be very careful while tackling tackling chinese influence as we have seen that india was engaged in a 9 month long standoff in the ladakh region and one of its flash point the pangong so lake is now seeing disengagement and the recent news is that the chinese uh, the chinese government has finally said that yes we have lost some soldiers some soldiers have been martyred and indian side had already agreed that 20 indian soldiers were martyred so you can see first is that india should definitely focus on the indo china border area and east china sea now east china sea lies very close you can see here now that that is the entire choke point region and in the indo pacific region you can see that east china sea is also very important in order for the other countries of the southeast asian nations i am talking about in order for them to grow and prosper because india needs if we talk about the act east and look east policy india also needs these countries to be 
very prosperous in order to develop trade. So India should also look at that. Also, if we talk about our next point is that Japan, the US, Australia, they should share the know-how related and anti-submarine technologies in order for India to be prepared. There should always be a preparedness when it comes to China because you never know what China can do. It was, of course, since 1962, we have learned this lesson that we always need to be prepared when it comes to China. So, in order to track submarines, track its movements, we need to be ready and India does need the assistance of all these countries. And infrastructure needs to be developed not only in India, but other ports as well. We have the Dakhm port in Oman. And of course, if we know about Bangladesh, see here the map. So, that's Bangladesh. Bangladesh has already approved Japan's Martabali port project and not China's port project. Alright? And we will discuss this map in detail later on. But I just push it here to show you. Alright? So, and the Anman Nicobar Islands, which are strategically very close to the Malacca Strait, this particular region needs to be tapped at the earliest. If we talk about the military preparedness, we need to tap this region so that it can be used for tracking submarines and Chinese ship movements, naval movements. So, you can see now what is China trying to do here? China is building ports in Gwadar, Jibauti. Jibauti is in Africa. You have to tell me in which country is it. Alright, that's in the continent Africa. And you have Spratly Islands. You have Maldives, Hamban Tota port. Now, this is the string pearl theory. And we also have a port in Bangladesh. So, we also as in Chinese port, not we India. Alright, so this entire region. Now, China is trying to encircle India. And this is very famously called the string of pearls theory. In order to develop ports in these many regions, it can actually take control of all the choke points in order to bother the countries which are trying to have free trade through these regions. So that is what China is doing. And India also needs to have the same approach now. Of course, moving on, let's talk about the challenges. First challenge is non-alignment. India has always been a proponent of the non-alignment policy, but because of the changing geopolitical situation, especially in the contemporary times, we need to be careful with our policies in the sense that we need to be aware of what kind of groupings can actually save, safeguard India's interests. And we have to, of course, walk a tightrope between being idealistic and being real politics. So, first challenge is that there is no clarity on objectives. There is not a paper which has all the guidelines given that, yes, we do have to follow this. So that is another challenge. We first need to be very careful that shall we restrict COD only to the military zone or we can expand beyond that, right? And again, individual visions of the Indo-Pacific region. Now here we will talk about the US and India. India says that Indo-Pacific region is a, is a region which is common for all and it also has this burden of shared common responsibilities. And what does the US say? The US says that we need to maintain a rules-based order. Any country who does not follow the rules over that region, for that region, will be isolated. So that is because no convergence of vision is there. You need to take that as a challenge as well. And here, internal economic challenges. Every country right now is facing a challenge when it comes to economic challenges. Not only India, but around the globe because of the COVID-19 induced lockdown. But the good news here is that if we talk about the new administration, this particular meeting has been very important because the new administration came into being and the Joe Biden administration has not completed one month of its, one month uh, anniversary of its being in the office. And then only, then also you can see Washington's continued approach towards China, which is a good news for India. All right. So, Economic challenges are also there. Now, we need to talk about the way forward. Formalization of Quad. We need an, a proper formalization, not informal strategic meetings. In order for it to develop further channels, we need formalization. We need a set of guidelines. We need to understand how departments should interoperate between themselves, among themselves, 
in order to make this grouping actually effective and not a toothless tiger. India would also require to be more aggressive diplomatically and not only militarily because diplomacy can solve so many problems. We have started to solve our problems at the, at the entire Ladakh region. At least in one, at one flashpoint, we can say that yes, the approach has been positive. So India needs diplomatic channels which are smooth in nature. Also, God should avoid, as the Chinese media is showing, an Asian NATO as being projected in the discussions, especially in China. China is trying to tarnish the image of God by saying that this is a group which is targeting China and nothing else. But because of this entire meeting, it showed that yes, we will not only talk about China, we will also discuss about the Indo-Pacific region, vaccination program, they also discussed about Myanmar, they discussed about maritime cooperation, counter-terrorism. So, so many areas of cooperation can pop out as much as these meetings progress. And India should not compromise on its strategic autonomy. India should not be fearful of any kind of inti intimidation from either the US or any other country in order to fulfill its independent objectives. It should remain independent. Now, if we talk about our question, please have a look. In order to secure national and regional interests, India should now focus more on the maritime domain. You have to discuss the statement in light of India's engagement in court countries. Alright, so I hope you'll be able to answer it correctly if you have followed this segment properly. That's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.